The date of Kentucky Derby 146 is galloping toward us. Tanya Evelyn of Churchill Downs has the details. Tanya, let's we we know that you've hit the media before, but let's take a look at what is Kentucky Derby 2020 going to actually look like in September. Well, you know, I think. Um, Obviously, the biggest difference is the date change. So I, I get a lot of questions about um, what what do I wear to a derby in September? What will the weather be like? And truly, you know, this is Memorial Day weekend. So as Kentuckians, we know that that's typically a warm weekend. I don't really think that it will change what people wear, but I think it will change people's physical presence at the track versus if they're celebrating at home. You know, when we did this the first time around in May for virtual derby, when we decided we would all celebrate the spirit of the first Saturday of May at home, it was interesting to me to see how people sort of incorporated all those traditions in their own way away from Churchill Downs racetrack and how the spirit of the derby lives on. And we know it'll look different this year. The horses will still run. We'll still have the best, you know, three-year-olds in the country vying for the title of Kentucky Derby champion. Um, but, you know, we're in a scenario where the, the first leg of the Triple Crown has already happened, and that's so unusual because we're used to kicking that off in Kentucky with the Kentucky Derby. So it's really hard to say. I think there's going to be things that feel really familiar and comforting to us as fans, and there's going to be things we don't recognize. And I think what as a community we need to do is just embrace the change and decide that we're going to do this our way, a new way, and then hopefully we can return to those traditions that we cherish in 2021. Whoever would have imagined that we'd be going, okay, is it the dress first or the dress first or the hat first or the mask first? Because you yeah. know you're gonna you're gonna see some people who are really going for the all-out coordinated look. I'm sure of it. And I, I think if you talk to any milliner in town, they would tell you that those requests are coming in. You know, the hat's already been ordered and now I need a coordinating mask. And, um, you know, people were asking us months ago, will you be wearing masks at Derby? And as you know, these these things are changing day to day. So we didn't really know what to say. I, I feel pretty comfortable now saying that will absolutely be a, a consideration and a need. So the question is, do you want to have some fun with it and incorporate it into your look? Um, I hope people do. What about you? Are you already working on what you're wearing to Derby? And if so, can you spill anything? I'm a little panicked to say no, <laughs> I've not. And I think that's just because as you know, as a country, as a city, we are all embroiled in so much change mm. right now. And there's there's an unpredictability surrounding us at every turn. You know, are our children gonna return to school? Um, you know, will, will I have to wear masks in 30 days? Um, what's happening with this virus. So I think that we're all just surviving and advancing. So the issue of what to wear hasn't become the most important one to me yet, although it's something I love to think about. Um, and, I, you know, I think this year, this is one of those derbies and, you know, you know as much as anyone, Angie, that I love derby fashion. Mm. Uh, but this is one of those years where I think it's all about um, safety first and foremost and, and, and comfort and, you know, celebrating this in a new way that um, just is, is as safe as possible. Now, speaking of safety, you are going to have, obviously, I mean, as long as you things stay that the way that they are, there will be far less fans in the stands. Are people going to be able to purchase tickets or has all of that been decided already? So there will be a limited opportunity to purchase general admission tickets. Um, and so we don't really know exactly what number that will be. Um, as of right now, as of today, actually, uh, there was a deadline to request a refund for the, our existing ticket holders. Um, and we hope to look at what that remaining number is, make the responsible choices in terms of how can we safely and responsibly distance our ticket holders. Um, and then make this sort of number of general admission tickets from there. Of course, general admission is limited to the infield this year. You know, we have an expansive infield, it's outdoors. So we feel comfortable if there's a way that we can safely distance a limited number of general admission holders um, there. Uh, and right now doing the math, making sure that, you know, six feet can be respected within pods and groups of people. And then we'll be able to you know, determine what that safe number is. Now, earlier, Tanya, you were talking about, I mean, of course, this is just a, a time of unknown, and it's also a time of great turmoil in a variety of ways from, you know, our kids going back to school to what's open, what's shut, what's already open and then is shutting. But then yeah. also, um, very recently, there were a number of 
protesters and leaders of protest groups who have come out to say, we are here to make you uncomfortable and um, that when Derby happens, they're asking for people to boycott it, but they are also letting you know they plan to be there in full force to protest. So how is Churchill Downs taking that information in? Well, you know, I think it's we are we operate in a city that is hurting right now and, and we feel that we're a part of that. Um, the Derby is nothing without the city of Louisville. We always say that we, we just host the Derby, but it belongs to our community. And we've always really felt that's true. We've always wanted the Derby to be a place for everyone, to be inclusive. Um, you know, I think it's something every year that unites our city. And now following this pandemic, our, our city really needs that more than ever. Um, you know, Churchill Downs absolutely supports anyone's right to peacefully protest. And so we would never wish to, to silence those voices at all. Um, you know, we do have an incredible security team who, as always, will keep the, the safety of, of our guests um, in mind and first and foremost, and we'll be doing that in terms of the, vi of the virus and in terms of any potential protests or demonstrations that would happen. Um, we, you know, we've experienced demonstrations before at the Kentucky Derby. Um, this one, you know, however, will be very different and we certainly understand um, the outcries and we sympathize with that. Uh, so, you know, we have a team of people who's preparing to handle it responsibly. Um, but again, we we support the, the desire to peacefully protest. And more than anything, we just want the Derby to continue to be um, a spirit that unites us as a community. And I'm hopeful that at some point our city can turn a corner and, and start to look toward that together again. I mean, certainly Churchill Downs doesn't have the answers on how to accomplish that, but um, really just hopeful that we can use this platform of the Kentucky Derby to stand for what it always has, which is to in inspire us and unite us. You have a position of leadership at Churchill Downs, though, and I mean, I think it's important for people to understand while you acknowledge Churchill Downs is not going to lead, how do we turn that corner? You and many, many others in leadership positions have been listening to voices across the community to try to, if nothing else, be there for support for how do we move forward? I think that, you know, if I severely regret the circumstances that have led to where we are as a community. But I'm eternally grateful that we are having these conversations, that we are forced to have them, and it's long, long overdue. So I think the most important thing to come out of this particular challenge is what can we as a company, and I think all companies are doing this, hopefully, what can we as a company do to really affect meaningful change, meaningful long-term change. And, you know, for us, it's taking a look at an industry that, um, you know, where every, you know, a lot of people look very similar and, and exploring how can we create a pipeline um, for minorities to have a sense of ownership in, in the Derby? Um, how can we how can we extend the Derby celebration? I know this is something that I've talked that Kentucky Derby Festival and I have talked about is how can we extend the celebration in a way that makes everyone feel like they have ownership in it? Um, and so, you know, those are those are small things. Those are those are just small steps that we can take. But then there are there are bigger conversations happening. How can we make an investment in this in this city, in this community that's hurting so much that does make a difference, that does um, you know, shorten that generational wealth gap, which is such an important part of the centuries long issue. Um, and so really trying to be thoughtful and take our time to make um, worthy investments that will affect this change and that we can look back on in decades to come and say how proud we are to have been part of something that kicked off this change in our city. Um, and we, we will have some announcements forthcoming about that, which are very exciting. Um, but again, it's it's just about taking responsibility and asking yourself, what is my place in this conversation in order to, to really move the needle and, and affect change? Absolutely. Well, I don't think any of us can say that Kentucky Derby 2020 isn't going to be memorable in myriad ways. Thanks for taking the time, Tanya. Angie, thank you so much for the opportunity. To keep up with all things Kentucky Derby, just visit KentuckyDerby.com.